This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, uh, teaching the course of statics, CE 2301. I'm going to talk on this video about chapter 8.3 from our textbook, Product of Inertia, which we call IXY. Product of Inertia is a second moment of area, kind of like moment of inertia, but it's not a moment of inertia. There's really no physical thing that you can point to to say what product of inertia is, which is unlike moment of inertia, which is a resistance to rotation of an area or a spread of a uh, measure of the spread or dispersal of an area. But we use IXY. It's very important because we're going to use it to find principal axes of inertia and the principal moments of inertia. Principal moments of inertia are the maximum and minimum I, or moment of inertia. Because if we have an area over here in this little drawing, a blob about the X and Y coordinate system, and we figure a moment of inertia about X and Y, we have to realize that there exists another coordinate system which we'll call V and U where th that is rotated from X and Y coordinate system by this angle theta P or principle, theta P is the principle, where I can get that a maximum moment of inertia and a minimum mom moment of inertia which at that coordinate system rotated by that amount I would call IU or IV not necessarily either one of those, but it, one of those is going to be the maximum, one of them is going to be the minimum, I, U, or I, V. And I have to note that at the principal uh, axes of inertia, when I've got I max and I min, then the product of inertia at that coordinate system, I, U, V, is equal to zero. Okay, there's a couple of interesting things about product of inertia that we're going to use to help us solve problems. And first, that's the the fact that due to this fact that it's the second moment of area and it's multiplied by x and y, if the entire area lies in the first or third quadrant where both x and y are positive or both x and y are negative, then ixy is positive. If the whole area lies in the second or the fourth quadrant, then x is positive, either x is positive and y is negative, or y is positive and x is negative. And so Ixy, product of inertia, is, in, is negative. If the blob, if the area crosses over like that, then I can't say anything for sure about the sign of IXY. The other interesting thing that we're going to use uh, that helps us solve problems is if the X or the Y axis is an axis of symmetry, then IXY, the product of inertia, is equal to zero. So if either one of those axes is an axis of symmetry, product of inertia is zero. Okay, once again, like I was doing on like we're doing a moment of inertia, the parallel axis theorem holds, which is that the product of inertia, Ixy, is equal to the centroidal product of inertia, Ix prime y prime, plus A dx dy. Instead of AD squared, I have this term here. Here's my little grid that shows this, the blob. The centroid is right there. It's got its own product of inertia about its own centroidal axis. And it's got this AD, ADXY, D, ADX dy term where dx and dy are the distance from the axes that I'm taking the product of inertia about to its centroid. Very similar to the moment of inertia. Okay, uh, you can get the product of inertia by integration. The book goes into a very elegant and beautiful description of this and the calculus of why this works. 
But if I have an area that's bounded by the x-axis, I want to take a vertical strip, usually, where the width of that strip is dx and the height of it is y, which is some function of x. And then I want to set my derivative of ixy is equal to one-half xy squared, where I substitute in that term for y and square it for of what x is, the function of x. Similarly, if I have an area that's bounded by the y-axis, I want to take a horizontal strip and its height is dy and its width is x, which is some function of y. Then the derivative of ixy is equal to one-half x squared y dy, where I substitute in this function of y for x and square it. And then I do my integration. Okay, last, just like the moment of inertia, with product of inertia, I can figure them by composite areas. So I'm going to use the same shape that I've been using for examples of an L shape, 6 by 8, 2 inches thick each side. And I set up a chart, divide the area up into two rectangular segments. Compute the area, 2 by 6, they're both 12 square inches area. Because the centroidal axis is an axis of symmetry, actually both of them are, I x prime y prime, its product of inertia about its own centroid is 0. Then I figure my dx distances and dy distances for rectangle 1. Dx is just this distance here, horizontal distance from its centroid to the y-axis, that's 1. The dy distance is centroid to the x-axis, so that's half the height of the rectangle, 3. For area 2, segment 2, the dx distance is this distance from the centroid which is 2 inches plus half the width of 6, or 3 inches, so it's 5 inches. dy is this distance, vertical distance, to the x-axis from its centroid, 1. I just then have another column. My final column is a, dx, dy. I just multiply these things out. That 12 times 1 times 3 is 36. For segment 1, 12 times 5 times 1 is 60. For segment 2, then I just sum my columns. My sum of my areas is 24 square inches. Ix prime y prime is 0 because both of them are symmetric about their centroidal axis. And this adx dy term is 96. So the product of inertia about the x and y axes, Ixy is equal to the sum of that column and that column. 0 plus 96 is equal to 96 inches to the fourth. Okay, from earlier work, I know that the centroid of this composite area, the whole L shape, is at coordinates 3 and 2. I've plotted those here on this diagram. The uh, x bar distance to the centroid is 3 and the y bar distance is 2. Then I can use the parallel axis theorem and rearrange it to get the product of inertia of this entire composite L-shaped I x prime y prime, the product of inertia about its own centroidal axis, axes, is equal to I x y that I just computed up here, minus this term A dx dy for the entire area. Well, I know I x y is 96. I know the area. And uh, these are the coordinates of dx subtracting from 0. So if these are the coordinates that make that I can get dx and dy from. The distance from the centroidal axis to the axis that I've computed product of inertia about. 96 minus the area, 24 of the whole thing, times 3 times 2 is equal to negative 48 inches to the fourth. Let's think about these, the signs of these two things real quickly and compare them to up here. In this case, 
the entire shape lies in the first quadrant so IXY product of inertia has got to be positive which it is in this case where my axes that I'm concerned about X prime and Y prime are it straddles it's actually in all four quadrants part of it is well, I guess I don't have anything up here in quadrant one but I can't say anything for sure about the sign of it but it does turn out to be negative 48 